My name is Fredrik Lidberg and I'm part of Lund Bladder Cancer Group and I work on a daily basis as a geologist. In my practice as a geologist, I have noticed and many of my colleagues also based on patient stories that their symptom of their bladder cancer, which is blood in their pee, has been neglected. And the most frequent reason for that is that urinary tract infections frequently uh, have blood in their pee. So patients are treated with antibiotics despite the fact that they had a bladder cancer. Presumably because they thought uh, the blood in their pee was related to an infection and not the bladder cancer. So that's why we've started the red phone where patients can call into our urology department and tell us I have blood in the pee so we can put them on the right pathway and exclude that there is a bladder cancer behind their symptom. The major challenge for patients with bladder cancer and us who treat them that the bladder cancer mortalities in Sweden has been unchanged for four decades. The reason for that in my opinion is that we haven't been able to tailor the treatment for each patient. Thus we have not implemented personalized medicine. So what I hope for is that we in the near future can introduce molecular subtyping in bladder cancer to give the patient a treatment with high probability of response and that's the way to improve the survival for bladder cancer patients in Sweden and globally. So uh, the research group on bladder cancer here in Lund uh, has been working for about 20 years to try to improve our knowledge about this disease. And we think that a reason that there has been uh, not so much improvement uh, in bladder cancer is that the cancer cells that make up each patient's tumor is different from a patient to a patient. And this difference can be in many, in many different kind. It can be the shape and the size of the cancer cells, uh, but it is also uh, related to the proteins and the genetic damages that is driving each patient's uh, cancer. So our research group here in Lund were actually first in the world to summarize all these differences into a molecular classification system that divides bladder tumors into five different types. One aim of our research group um, that we're currently working towards today is to figure out when we can recommend a specific treatment such as um, chemotherapy or immunotherapy for a specific patient. And one of the ways we do this by collecting a little bit of tumor tissue from every patient's tumor. And we're currently doing this for patients who are treated in the southern parts of Sweden. And uh, these patients uh, consent to be included in this study. And we are analyzing the, uh, the tumors at the molecular level in real time. Based on these results, we uh, uh, hope to be able to include these patients into uh, clinical trials or to offer them standard of care and um, over time be able to evaluate the clinical value and impact of our classification system. I'm Elena and I'm a master's student here at the Lung Bladder Cancer Group. I work with classification of bladder cancer, so classifying the samples into different tumor types. In this type of analysis, we are looking at the variation in different samples across all of these genes. Uh, we can look at what one sample here, like in the big picture, put it all together, and then we see if it, the variation is and how it matches with the different types of tumor. So the red color means that it's high, and the green color means that it's low. So you can see that it varies a lot depending on the types. Each row is a different gene, and then its column, it's different patients. So my name is Ponce Eriksson. I'm working as a bioinformatician, which means that I'm working with a lot of the data that we generate in this uh, research group. And I've been doing that for uh, quite a lot of years here in the group. And currently I'm working as a, a postdoc. The work that I do relates to, to gene expression analysis. That's both for tumors as a whole, as well as uh, single cell sequencing, which is uh, looking at individual 
cells within tumors. Figures here relates to uh, the classification that Elena showed you. We use different algorithms to predict which type of tumor a patient um, presents with. But there's an issue with those methods, and that's uh, usually that when the, the doctor takes the biopsy from the patient, we can't tell you know, for certain how much cancer cells is in this tissue piece. And if there's too much of the non-cancer tissue, then that can impact some of the uh, methods that we use. Here, we're trying to sort of artificially, within the computer, add noise from normal tissue into the sample to see how that affects our prediction methods. And currently what we're seeing is that we're making quite a significant improvement in sort of how uh, unpure the sample can be before we start to run into issues. My name is Karina. I am uh, Portuguese and um, I joined the group in 2017 and I've been working with um, mouse models and uh, in vitro models like organoid models. So my aim is actually to be able to create models that recapitulate the characteristics of the patient samples in the lab so we can manipulate these models and study how the tumor behaves when we change the conditions and when we apply different treatments. So what I've been doing in the past years is that we get the, the tumor samples, we dissociate the samples into single cells and then place them to grow in a specific matrix with, um, with a medium that supports their growth. And these actually, they are like mini tumor or mini bladders. In this case, it represents a tumor, but we can also do this for a regular bladder. Here, within each bubble, there are maybe different cell types that they are cooperating and growing together. And then we analyze them under the microscope to see what is their identity, if they are behaving in a similar way or not. And in this, we can show that we grew organoids in different conditions and from different origins, and they actually organize themselves slightly different. For example, here, they are a bit more dense, but still very organized the cells on the outside they stain some more keratins than the cells in the inside and here the inside part they look like that the cells have a different identity the cells do not get together so much so the adhesion between cells is slightly different the difference between this and this is just a change in the growth conditions in the environment so we can see that the environment is important for the cells to manifest themselves and to grow these models they have been used for um, testing chemotherapy therapies and other conditions for us to try to understand how the cells behave in humans when they are under stress and when they are under treatment. Another very important analysis method that we use in the bladder cancer group is analysis of histology slides. So I will explain this here and basically a very thin section of the patient's cancer is um, is taken in the lab and placed on a microscopy slide such as this. These slides are then loaded into the slide scanner that you can see here. And this is taking a very detailed picture of what is present on these microscopy slides. I can show you an example here of how it may look. On the screen here, we see uh, one example of, of such, a, um, such a tumor where you can see down here you have many different tumor pieces that have been removed from the patient. And these contain both normal and cancer tissue. And in this case, you see the normal tissue and the brown staining that you see here is actually staining the mucosa of the, in, the lining of the bladder wall, which is there as a waterproof barrier to keep the urine out. And in this case, the urine would be on this side and here you have the mucosa, and this would be the patient's bladder. If you go to a different tissue piece here, you can also see the cancer cells. And they are growing in a very different manner. So they are no longer forming a uniform barrier. They are invading into the depths of the patient's bladder. And you can see this here as these light brown nests that grow deep into the bladder. And this is the type of um, cancer that would be life-threatening to the patient and that would need improvements in treatment. 